Okay, good evening, everyone. Good evening, IFMG. Good evening, Niner Squad. Good evening, Sir M. So for tonight, we have our new lecturer from uh, 9.0 Niner. So he is a IELTS specialist. Uh, I, he's an, rather, IELTS specialist. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. <laughs> sorry, throat, sorry. IELTS communication trainer, graduate of Ateneo de Manila University, and grammar specialist of 9.09er since 2007. So everyone, let's welcome Sir Fritz Nolasco. Sir Fritz. Hello, yes. Uh, good day to everyone attending this uh, live stream on Facebook. Uh, well, of course, uh, good morning sa mga iba sa atin and good afternoon. And uh, for those here in the Philippines, so good evening to everyone. And yes, um, I will be facilitating this live lecture, uh, two-hour lecture then. And uh, yeah, so just like uh, just a brief introduction of myself uh, to add to what uh, they also how they introduced me. So yeah, so I'm from Niner, and um, well, uh, I started with the company back in 2007 up until now. Then, and um, you know, uh, we conduct coaching sessions uh, initially. Then eventually, I, I was I was promoted into. Uh, rendering lectures then. And uh, my focus is actually grammar, although that's not going to be my topic for today's session. But instead, uh, we're going to focus on one uh, specific uh, subtest, which I think is uh, one of the most challenging for many people, um, especially without practice. No? So we're going to talk about the speaking test. So there. So, um, well, to, to facilitate uh, better discussion for tonight, Siguro. Um, you can use our chat messages then uh, if in case you guys have questions or clarifications. But since this is live stream, I'll try my best to answer as many questions as you could and possibly um, the topics that we'll be discussing for today. Um, I'll try my best to anticipate possible questions that you might have with regard to the speaking test. Ayan. Tapos, uh, sa dulo, Towards the end, um, I will be giving you a copy of the handout, whatever I will be flashing on my screen. Um, I I'm going to give you guys a copy towards the end of our session. Okay? All right. So, yeah. so guys, uh, just spare me a few seconds. I'll be sharing my screen first. Okay. All right. So there. So uh, let me just check, guys. No, uh, before I start with a uh, with a uh, main lecture, then uh, I just want to make sure that I am able to see you sa Facebook, right? So apparently, I'm I'm on what I see. I'm seeing right now is Zoom. Oops, sorry. Narinig sa ko. Right. Uh, okay. All right. So there. Um, yeah. Uh, for for today's session, we're going to focus on the speaking test, of course. And uh, I, I'll just maximize the font uh, so you'd be able to see the text clearly. I'll just zoom in. Okay. All right. So uh, we'll start with the test overview. Right, so I, I would assume some of you here are totally clueless as to what to expect on your IELTS exam. So it's different from uh, the other English exams that you might know of, like TOEFL. So iba yung format nila doon for the speaking test, and the same also goes with your IELTS. So uh, basically, for the speaking test of your IELTS, it's a, it's an interview, right? So it's like a job interview, but it's not that formal compared to job interview. So it's more conversational style. Uh, what, what they're really looking into here is how comfortable the examinee is in using the language. No? So that's why confidence really plays a very important role pagdating sa, ano, sa exam natin. So it's an interview. And um, allow me to break it down into three parts. So it starts with part one, where 
uh, you have to prepare yourself to be asked questions um, about well about yourself no so usually mga personal questions ito and what what are some sample topics that they frequently ask on the on part one well they might ask you about your work uh, sometimes they'd ask you to talk about your hometown and um, at times they will ask you about your hobbies and interests and so you you'll be randomly talking about like everyday topics from music to movies that you love watching to like you know to outdoor activities that you love to do on your spare time and so on and so forth so pretty much um the the questions or the topics for part one they're fairly close to our heart and it's not really that challenging to answer the question. So although understandably, so this is the first few minutes of the test and it can be nerve wracking. Right? So especially we know that we are being tested here. So hindi may iwasan yung, you know, you, you, you become so anxious about the test. And sometimes easy questions, fairly easy questions, sometimes uh, they are very difficult to answer because of the, the tension that is uh, building inside oneself uh, during, the, during the test. So there, and this, part one would usually last for around five minutes right so start with that uh, then we go ahead with part two and wh what do we expect on part two so dito yung part two naman so we, we normally call it the task card right because it's literally like a card you, you will be given like a um, when I took the exam like a decade ago, that was a long time ago, um, it was in the form of like a laminated paper. And within that paper, there's the question, the main question there. And within under it, you, you'll be provided some guide questions. No? And uh, the questions can, can be actually anything under the sun. Right, um, and actually even beyond Earth. No, I mean, Sunday, they'd ask you about like space travel. Or sometimes they'd ask you about uh, a person that you admire at work, or um, it could be about your favorite music, to topics concerning, well, current events, diba? So I think it will be to your advantage, you know? so just one helpful tip. I think it's to your advantage if you expose yourself to like general uh, information, like especially current events, what's happening around us, right? Because uh, at least on the exam, made before writing and speaking, at least you come prepared. At least you can impart to the examiner uh, some knowledge, you no know, sensible knowledge uh, that you could share or that you could impart to the to the examiner. So there. So the, the task card, the, the good thing about this part, you guys, you no, know, because you will be given enough time. You will be given ample time to prepare for the test. So the first minute, will be given to you to prepare for it, right? And I highly recommend that you take advantage of that preparation time, no? And uh, one other advice is that I wouldn't really recommend you um, writing because on, on this first minute preparation, um, you will be given a sheet of paper to jot down your thoughts, to brainstorm, right? Because some of us are visual learners, so you'd like to see, uh, like, you know, by, by writing your notes there, Diba? May mga iba, they do not prefer like writing their notes. That's that's perfectly fine. No? I, I recall when I had my exam, um, I, I didn't write anything on that sheet of paper, but uh, I just uh, mentally tried to process. Um, I, I already forgot the, what the question was, but I didn't use the sheet of paper because um, I think it would yeah, I'd be able to do it sponta more spontaneously if I don't write anything. But of course, to each his own. No, may mga iba naman sa atin that we prefer writing it down and that should be fine. The purpose of that uh, first minute is to prepare yourself, to organize your thoughts then, to brainstorm to as many ideas as you could. So, yun. And the challenging part of this uh, task card is the next two minutes. No? And I think this is the most challenging part of the speaking test, right? Because within that two minutes, you will be asked to, well, talk about the topic. Uh, although there are guide points there, so normally may mga three or four bullet points under the main question, uh, you will be given two minutes to talk about the topic and um, ensure that we'd be able to maximize that two minutes then. No? And if you go beyond it, uh, the, the examiner will 
ask you to stop talking and that should be fine. So whether you're not finished with answering the questions or not, so you will have to stop abruptly for two minutes then. Okay, right. So that's what happens for parts one and two. Now we proceed with part three. So medyo makakahinga-hinga ka na dito, no? So yung sa part three. So um, part three is where the examiner will be asking you some follow-up questions, right? So I'll just write it down here. So what do I mean by follow-up questions? Well, basically, the examiner will be asking you um, some three or four or even like five questions, really depends, no? um, relating to whatever topic you covered for part two then. So if there are like things that need to be clarified or things that you need to provide more, more evidence or more examples, so this is the portion uh, this is a chance for you to clarify what you pointed out on part two then by means of answering um, like, you know, some questions, more three or four questions then. And uh, unlike part two, you won't be given enough time to prepare for your answer. So you'll have to answer right away. Diba? So that's, uh, that's what normally happens on part three. So try to imagine yourself going through these three parts then and Normally, uh, typical speaking tests would last for around 11 to 15 minutes. No? So, wala naman siya sa haba. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, the longer the interview is, uh, the higher the grade is. No? So, it doesn't have to do with the quantity. But it's, of course, uh, the quality of how you were able to effectively use the language. No? So, yun yung basihan nila. And, of course, we're going to look into the criteria later. You know? So how is the examiner going to evaluate your uh, performance? So there, so that's 11 to 15 minutes. Okay, so there. So um, I, I just want to connect it with uh, what we offer here sa Niner. And um, if you guys check on our uh, page, uh, Facebook page. I want you guys to hopefully, if you have time later, to check on our Facebook page. We're actually offering special promos this December, so I hope you check it out. And what exactly do we offer here at Niner? Well, um, we basically offer a review, uh, not only for IELTS, but for future references, if in case uh, there's a need for you to take the OET or TOEFL then. Right, so the, we, we offer materials, uh, we offer um, online reviews, and um, it's pretty flexible because no? we also have some recorded versions of our lectures then on our app. So the, the, we, we medyo high tech na kami ngayon, no? so gone were the days that uh, we, 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 we just go to class, physical classroom, but uh, the advantage of uh, technology is that we would be able to reach people beyond the Philippines. No? So I understand we have, uh, sorry, uh, we, we have uh, attendees here coming from other countries, especially in Middle East. So hello guys, senyo. So there, so uh, that's what we offer, so Niner. Uh, of course, um, what, what I highly recommend you to maximize is our coaching sessions. So we offer unlimited coaching coaching sessions, then you can have uh, coaching sessions for speaking tests or writing, so wh whatever you prefer then. No? And the thing is, uh, the speaking test really, guys, it boils down to constant practice, right? And uh, hopefully through that constant practice, uh, someone will be giving you uh, pieces of advice of what needs to be improved on. And, uh, you know, we, we have multitude of uh, like coaches and most of our coaches actually uh, used to be our students before who really had, you know, who really aced their um, IELTS uh, speaking tests. No? So uh, th that's why, you know, that's the advantage of having coaching sessions. So apart, of course, from writing then. Okay, so there. So um, I will have to move on to the next portion, guys, no? Uh, let's see this portion. Okay, so types of questions. Well, uh, I, I think I already have partly discussed this kanina. No? So yung types of questions, part one, personal questions. For part two, anything under the sun. So for example, um, I, I can categorize them into five groups. Like for example, they'd ask you about a person. Sometimes they'd ask you about like an object. 
right? Uh, sometimes an event that you attended, like a town fiesta, no? so pwede itanong sa inyo yun. Um, it, it could be your own experience, right? Or concepts, right? So it, it could also be concepts, like what you think about climate change, alimbawa. Diba? So there. So again, I just want to present to you the kind of questions that you anticipate on the speaking test. Okay? Now, let me share to you this table. Now, this is something that I just got from the internet, so you can just easily search for it. Uh, just simply type in IELTS speaking band descriptor as presented here. Now, so it's free. It's readily available. And um, this table, uh, I'll just zoom in uh, in case you can't see the details then. Uh, hopefully, yeah, if you're, if you're using your smartphone, guys, then probably you can uh, just pinch on the screen. Uh, this is the best uh, text uh, size that I could get here. But at any rate, we'll, we'll discuss it by, part by part as well. So um, the speaking test, your performance will be measured against four different criteria. And um, you know, in, in relation to the to our company's name, which is Niner, because if in case you're not familiar, uh, the perfect score, the highest possible score that you can get on the test is actually nine. No? So yun yung kumpaga, parang 100 sa, ano natin, sa school natin, yun yung uno sa college. Diba? So you have nine. And um, well, um, it, it, it comes with a 0.5 interval in between. So you have 8.5, there's 8, there's 7.5, then there's 7. And I, well, for, for, for most of us, we need to get at least 7. Diba? So especially if like, you know, if you're applying for a visa screen in the US, uh, nurses most especially, so they have to achieve this much coveted 7.0. Tapos you have 6.5, there's 6, and so on and so forth. So uh, how is the examiner going to assess your performance? So um, he, he's going to assess it according to four different criteria. So isa-isahin kong i-discuss siya. So here, uh, the first one, um, as you can see here on my where my cursor is, so hopefully you see my cursor. Um, the first one is fluency and coherence, right? And on the second... You have the second column here, that's lexical resource. And the third and fourth one, so I'll just move on my, move my, my screen. So that's grammatical range and accuracy. Then finally, you have pronunciation on the last column. Diba? So there are four different criteria. So they, they are, of course, of equal uh, scores, equal weights then. So let's discuss it part by part. So sabi dito, according to this table, uh, for us to uh, for us to achieve a score of nine, uh, I'll just have to find a way to maximize the the size, guys. Ah. so medyo naliliitan kasi ako eh. right? I think this is the most that I could get. So you just I'll just read it to you what, what's written there on this uh, first column. So for fluency and coherence, it says that in order to get the nine you have the, the examiner ha, the examiner rather has to speak fluently with only rare repetition or self correction so of course it's it's natural it's natural to commit mistakes along the way diba? so pero those mistakes are not too big are not too magnified to the point that it will affect one's confidence or it can compromise your delivery so these are just minor slips kasi uh, you're thinking about like conversations you, so you're expressing yourself freely and you're expressing yourself on the spot and it's understandable that sometimes uh, there, there might be some lapses in organization and that's perfectly fine diba? so that, that's the first criteria the first item there and another uh, there might be some hesitation as well, um, but the hesitation is more of content related. So you can actually tell um, by just simply looking at the person, whether the person is hesitant, is the person hesitant because of grammar or is the person hesitant because possibly he's trying to process his thoughts. Diba? So magkaibang ano yun eh, factor yun. Right. Then uh, the third one, you, you, well, speaks coherently with fully appropriate cohesive features then. Because after all, when you say coherence, it's the flow of your ideas. Diba? So how organized are you 
in terms of conveying your message. No? So you're being evaluated um, according to that criterion. And of course, develops topics fully and appropriately. So that's, of course, what we're looking for if we're aiming for at least to get a nine for that criterion. Then I'll move on to the second one. So lexical resource, it says. And uh, there are two bullet points written there. So the first one is uses vocabulary with flu full flexibility and precision in all topics. Now, uh, don't get me wrong, guys. So, uh, I mean, lexical resource is about vocabulary, to, diba? And um, it's it's often like uh, in 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 my class, for instance, when we have when we cover like vocabulary classes, it's often the case that um, some people would have this notion that I have to make use of big words. No, kailangan gumamit ako ng mga big words. No, and even yung mga idiomatic expressions. No, and um, it's quite understandable that they have this idea. No, because um, for one. Ang tingin kasi natin is that kailangan malalim yung words natin para makakuha ng magandang score. But the thing is, guys, um, it's supposed to be a conversation, right? Uh, there, there's a different expectation in terms of vocab and grammar when it comes to spoken language, which is quite different from what is expected from a formal writing like your writing task to, like when you're writing your essay. Diba? And mind you, it's perfectly fine to make use of simple words, right? On the on the on the speaking test, right? You can make use of words that we typically use in conversations, but yeah, just have to make sure that we use the words in the proper sense. And as much as possible, you'd like to minimize uh, redundancy. You know? So yung redundancy is the repetitive use of words then. Okay, so there. So again, I just want to clarify that. And uh, yeah, so of course, uses idiomatic language naturally and accurately as well. Okay, so now I'll have to move on to the third and fourth columns now. So let me just look into this. So the next one is grammatical range and accuracy. So basically grammar, diba? So um, it's written there, uses a full range of structures naturally and appropriately then. So how you form sentences in a natural sense and produces consistent appropriate structures or accurate structures apart from slips. So there might be some slips, of course. And the last criterion, yung pronunciation, um, as written, so the first bullet point uses a full range of pronunciation features with precision and subtlety, right? And you sustains flexible of features throughout and is effortless to understand. Now, guys, it's not necessary to pretend a foreign accent. Like, for example, we have this idea that, okay, I, I have to, to pretend a British accent or Australian accent on my exam. Um, that, that's actually a wrong notion, no? So you, you, can, you can just simply use a neutralized accent. And I think that's the advantage of Filipinos compared to like um, other Asian countries then. Uh, I mean, thanks to our educational system, thanks to our exposure to American culture, the right? So uh, we, we, we are able to converse relatively well um, in good English compared to other neighboring countries. This is, of course, not to uh, put down you know, the, our neighboring countries, but you know, I'm just speaking of like what I observe. Diba? And I think that's our advantage. Diba? And uh, the thing is, these are things that are already expected from us because we've been taught this uh, topic, th this English subject then back in elementary, back in high school. So what we offer here at Niner is basically like a refresher, diba? so a refresher of the things that you already have covered previously back in school. And you just, just for us to refine what you already know and try to, you know, to enhance it diba? as part of your preparation. And the thing is, I think uh, what we offer is actually going beyond uh, just the, the IELTS speaking test. Because no? beyond it, when you when you fortunately go abroad already, when you go to the US, when you go to uh, UK, for instance, uh, you'd be able to take home the lessons that we learned from, you know, from the from the review then. No? So you mga basics natin for grammar, the tips that your coaches would provide you. So it goes beyond uh, what uh, it goes beyond the IELTS exam once you pass it. 
Okay? All right. So, guys, before I move on to the next portion, because I'm going to discuss detail per detail, I will just have to pause a bit with my lecture. So, I, uh, I will have to uh, share with you a video. So, I have this video to, to just formally introduce the speaking test. Right. So, I'll just have to stop sharing first, or better yet, I'll just have to switch to a video mode first. Uh, just give me one moment to pull it out. Right, and after this video, probably I can entertain any question you might have. So I'm going to look into our uh, chat messages later. Okay, so I'll start this video first. Hello and welcome to Study English IELTS Preparation. I'm Margot Politis. Today we'll look at the IELTS Speaking Test. There are three parts to the test. Each part has a particular purpose. The examiner will record the interview to ensure the test is to standard and conducted fairly for all candidates. Let's watch someone begin their interview. Good morning. My name is Maria. What's your name? My name's Sanjay. Thank you. Can I just check your ID, please, Sanjay? Thank you, that's fine. What are you doing at the moment? Are you a student or do you work? Um, I'm only a student. Mm -hmm. And what are you studying? I'm studying a diploma in business. The purpose of part one is to settle you down and get you used to the test situation. So you will only be required to answer some general questions about yourself on some familiar topics such as studies, travel, sports, family, food and exercise. Let's see how another candidate answers questions about exercise. The first question is designed to test her skills at identifying. What kind of exercise do you enjoy? I enjoy running because I think it's easy. And I think you should need a uh, good shoes and you can run. And I can run at the morning. It's really good. Mm -hmm. I think. The next question is to see how well she expresses an opinion. Is it important to exercise regularly? Yes, I think it's really important because you can um, Keep your body healthy and you can keep fit, especially for girls, keep fit and it's good for your health as well. This question tests comparing. Do you think people are exercising more these days compared to 50 years ago? No, I don't think so. Because you still like me, you don't have enough time. I think you a lot of people don't have enough time as well, so they don't have enough regular exercise. Other skills that are assessed include describing, expressing preferences, and giving reasons. You are not expected to give in-depth answers at this stage of the interview, but you can extend your answer with a longer sentence. To help prepare for this section, you can develop vocabulary around the topic areas and make sure you know the verb tense that is appropriate for answering the question. For example, the question, what kind of exercise do you enjoy, is in the simple present tense. So she replies with the same tense, I enjoy running. Listen again. What kind of exercise do you enjoy? I enjoy running. In part two, the examiner will give you a topic on a prompt card to talk about for one to two minutes. You will be allowed one minute to make some notes. After your talk, the examiner will ask you a follow-up question. The topics are of a general nature. You could be asked to talk about an object that is important to you, or a major festival in your country, or to describe an interesting building. Let's see how the interviewer introduces the second part of the interview and how the candidate prepares for the talk. Now. I'd like you to talk for one to two minutes on a topic that I'll give you. Sure. You have one minute to prepare yeah. and make some notes to help you. Do you understand? Yes. 
Okay. Well, here's a pencil and a paper for making notes, and here is your topic. I'd like you to describe a holiday or vacation you took recently. Sure. This is what was written on the prompt card she gave him. Describe a holiday or a vacation you took recently. You should say where you went, who you travelled with, what you did, and explain why you enjoyed your vacation. Think of two or three things to say about each prompt and write down words that will help remind you of what to say. Let's look at what he wrote. Did the notes help him? Let's listen to his talk. Uh, a holiday which I went recently was in Thailand, Bangkok, Thailand. Um, we we planned this, I guess, two weeks, two weeks in advance. It was kind of a last minute planning with, with my family. We decided to just go for a short holiday down to Bangkok. So uh, we called we called my travel agent and uh, we got we got tickets booked for me, my mom, my brother, and my sister. It is important to begin your talk by introducing the topic. He is following the notes he made. For who, he tells us, we got tickets booked for me, my mum, my brother and my sister. For what, he talks about shopping. We went to two shopping malls. I was one of the malls called Big C. Big C, yeah, that was the mall. So uh, the mall was very clean and uh, I was surprised, it was very clean, very big, very, very big, very clean and all. So that was just a normal shopping centre. Then over the weekend, we decided to go and visit this big weekend market in uh, Bangkok itself. So it's called a big weekend market. Uh, it had like thousand over stores. It was this big, humongous place. So what we did, we spent our whole time there shopping. For why, he tells us what a wonderful experience it was. But it was a wonderful experience going to Bangkok and uh, visiting the sites. Your talk will be well organised if you follow the same order as the prompts on the card. The interviewer ends this section with a follow-up question. Let's listen to what the interviewer asks him. Do you think you'll go back there again? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, for shopping is one thing. Prices are really cheap and all. Yeah. But uh, it's just the place, the people, they're all friendly and down to earth. And uh, it was a memorable experience. He responds appropriately with two sentences. That's all that is required. To help you prepare for this part, practice talking about a range of topics. The final part of the interview is a discussion on issues related to the topic in part two. The examiner will be assessing your ability to develop ideas in some depth. Let's see what kind of questions he was asked and how the discussion is introduced. OK, then. Well, you've described a holiday you've been on, and I'd like to ask you a few more questions related to this. Sure. Is it important um, to travel and take holidays in different places? Yeah, I feel, I feel it is important. Uh, reason being, you, you're exposed to different cultures, you're exposed to different kind of people, how, how do they behave, and uh, you get to see a lot of things. If you just take a holiday in your own country or somewhere nearby, uh, you won't really get to see uh, the world, I guess. See how people behave and all. By asking him, is it important to travel? She is testing whether he can express an opinion. Next, she sees if he can speculate. Are people travelling more these days, do you think? Ah, uh, yes, definitely. Uh, as you can see nowadays, there's budget airlines where airline prices all become so cheap so that they can visit more places and go to other countries. Then she asks a question designed to see how well he can compare. Is it better to travel alone or in a group? I believe it's better to travel in a group where you have a companion, maybe not, not in such a big group, but I guess maybe two to three people where it's, it's nice to have someone along to share your experiences with and, you know, to, to, to visit places and, you know, have someone there for companionship, you know. And finally, she tests how well he can identify. 
What kind of problems is travel and tourism causing? Um, sometimes people don't know other people's culture and they might offend them in a rude way. They might not know it's offensive, but, you know, not knowing their culture and not reading up about it. Sometimes when you go to a foreign land and you might do something to maybe insult the host or insult someone there. To answer questions well in this section, you should watch programs on current affairs, practice discussing topics, and using a variety of language functions, such as comparing, explaining, and describing. That's all for today. Good luck with your studies. Okay. Right, so guys, uh, there you have it, uh, a short video to formally introduce to us the speaking test. Okay, so this time, um, I would like to zero into the following details then. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to dissect the four different criteria into four parts and let's go through it. What are some tips and strategies that we can um, apply in order to get a good score for each of these criteria? Okay, so the first one as written, we'll, we'll talk about grammatical range and accuracy. Uh, just give me one moment to adjust my screen. So this one, um, so, we already have defined what it is, uh, grammatical range and accuracy. And what are some helpful tips para ma-maximize natin yung score natin doon? So first, um, you, you need to review grammar topics, right? And uh, when I say grammar topics, really, when you say grammar, kasi it's all about the the, the, the the rules of the English language. And as much as that the Filipino language or French or Spanish would have their own rules. Um, English also has its own rules then. And some of the rules in English language are not necessarily the same with Filipino. And that's why may mga sentences uh, Filipino that are too difficult for us to literally translate. So when you say literally translate, lesson, ita translate mo siya word for word. So pag nangyari yun, nag -iba yung meeting eh. Right, so instead of translating the word itself or the phrase, then you need to translate the entire thought instead. So yung idea, yung sentence, yung tina translate natin. So at any rate, um, we we have to make sure that we are aware of the rules of grammar. And guys, when I say rules of grammar, let me just share with you those common mistakes that I notice. No, because from time to time, apart from uh, doing lectures on our online review, I also do conduct coaching sessions. And what do I observe from those people I, I talk with? So pagdating sa grammar, uh, a common lapse has something to do with the verb tense. Diba? Yung alimbawa, I, I ask them to, to talk about like their uh, who, how they were as a high school student. No? So I asked them about their high school memories. So pag nagkukwento sila, ang tendency, instead na dapat past tense, I was expecting for them to use past tense. Um, sometimes people instead make use of the present tense or minsan future tense yung ginagamit. And that, should, that, that shouldn't be the correct tense to use, of course. Diba? So when you talk about verb tenses, we have to make sure that we know when to use the past tense, when should we use the present tense. Or another example, um, if I ask a student about like uh, what he does for a living, so I ask them to talk about their job. So ang kwento nila sa akin is parang past tense yung dating, where in fact it's supposed to be present tense because you're talking about your current position or your current job. Diba? So we have to make sure that we use the proper tense. Or if you're asked to talk about your dreams for the family, then of course you're expected to use the future tense. And we offer here sa online review namin sa Niner various grammar classes then, which of course includes verb tenses. No? So I hope you uh, check it out once you enroll with us. And prepositions too. Right, yung tamang gamit ng mga in, on, at, to, from. Honestly speaking, 
I myself would still have some confusion with prepositions. No, uh, they're the the most confusing. I, I would have to admit that this is the, they're the most confusing part of speech in English language. And sometimes I have to do a research as well. Kailan ba ginagamit yung on? Kailan ba yung ginagamit ng at? Kasi pag matagal mo na siyang hindi nagagamit, sometimes you forget about it completely. And that's why you have to do some research as well. Diba? So yun, so prepositions. No? And we do offer, of course, uh, another class that talks about prepositions and those common mistakes in using prepositions. And what else do I observe? Subject-verb agreement. I'll just write down SVA. Like, um, when, when is my verb singular? Or when is it plural? So we'll talk about that um, in one of our classes then. Okay. I just want to uh, share with you some common mistakes I noticed pagdating sa grammar. And therefore, um, knowing or knowing the concepts no, nung, nung rules ng grammar, of course, you, you, you need to apply it. And the thing is, there are a lot of grammar exercises that uh, you can work on online. Or on our online review, we have grammar exams to offer to students as well. So, you know, the grammar exams would cover like various topics, uh, just like what I mentioned kanina, yung mga verb tenses and all. Kasi the idea of grammar exercises is that you, you know the concept and it's time for you to apply it. Diba? And the more you apply it, the more you keep practicing it. So, mas nai-ingrain sa utak natin or sa isip natin yung tamang gamit niya. And it becomes voluntary. Because that's what we want to achieve. Um, we, we, what we want to achieve on the test is like an effortless use of the language. Diba? So, hindi siya yung parang napilitan or hindi parang parang uh, you you really tried hard for it so it needs to be it needs to be effortless and to reach that effortless level of course you need to constantly practice okay then um if you're aiming for a 7 you no know, so I, I just want to point out 7 or a higher score hindi pwede na parang very simple sentences lang ginagamit natin sa sagot natin sa examiner. So we'll have to make sure that we use variety in terms of sentence structure. And we'll learn in grammar classes that in English language, there are different types of sentences from simple to compound sentence to compound complex. Diba? Kasi with variety and sentence structure, it makes your discussion more interesting. Right? And it would sound more sophisticated for your examiner. Kasi pag puro simple sentences lang yung ano natin, it's too safe. No? So parang uh, magsususpect yung examiner mo, oh, you're playing too safe, di ba? And the thing is, I cannot give the student a 7.0 score if you're just playing it too safe. Possibly, if you're just aiming for a 6.0, then pwede na yung mga simple sentences kasi less words, less mistakes, right? But it's a different ball game if you're aiming for a 7. You need to demonstrate that you're able to use wide variety of sentence structure, di ba? So yun. And um, another thing, no? so really, guys, ang speaking test, it's all about balance, right? So it's all about balance. So in as much as you'd like to be conscious of your grammar mistakes, like when you have your coaching session with us and um, your coach would point out that there, these are the mistakes that you commit. And so next time around, you'll be conscious of it. Sometimes being too conscious of these mistakes can actually have a drawback as well. So you have to balance it. So that's the beauty of practice. Uh, the more you practice, the more you have to balance, the more you, you'll be able to balance those two. Kasi there's a tension of being too conscious of your grammar and at the same time correcting yourself. Diba? And you know you have to find a balance there. And uh, the way you develop that sense of balance is through practice. Okay, So as written here, let me just read what's highlighted. Don't be overly concerned with minor grammatical mistakes. Diba? Kasi pag masyadong conscious ka, it can compromise your fluency. And the thing is, with the, the fluency is really the steady flow of your ideas. Diba? You just have to always put yourself in the listener or the examiner's position. Diba? Kung laging pahinto-hinto ka, 
uh, tapos lagi mong kinokorek yung sarili mo, sometimes it disrupts the flow of ideas na didistract. Diba? Na didistract unnecessarily yung examiner mo. Diba? So it's perfectly fine to commit minor mistakes. I have to admit, admit myself as well that despite you know facilitating lectures um at uh, at niner i still commit mistakes you know, especially kung wala kang tulog no that's why that's one important thing guys that you have to make sure that you're well rested prior to your exam to making sure na you have fresh na brain cells that can answer the questions to the best of your abilities okay right and just like what i stated you need to practice, di ba? So, sabi nga nila, practice makes perfect. Eh, pero sabi naman ng iba, eh, uh, nobody's perfect, so why practice? Right? But at least, uh, if it doesn't make it perfect, at least it makes it a 7, or it makes it a 7.5, or it makes it an 8. Di ba? If we, if we can't really push for a, for a 9, at least we can aim for the much needed, much coveted 7 or 7.5. And I believe, I, I'm a great believer of practice. No? So the more you practice, uh, you religiously commit to your practice, no matter uh, no matter what you're feeling. Diba? So sometimes you have to put some discipline in it. Whether you feel like it or not, you'll have to, you'll have to practice it. Diba? So, you know, hopefully that, you know, that would help you develop your grammar skills. Okay, so that's it for the first criterion. I, I'm just going to look into our chat messages, guys. No? Um, I am connected using my smartphone and I just want to make sure that I don't miss out on any question you might have. But I think so far, wala naman questions. But uh, yeah, so I think we have around 152 people. Um, on Facebook right now. So uh, welcome, guys. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so I'll just, I'll just go back to the chat messages later and try to answer any question you might have. But anyway, I'll have to move on to the second criterion. So what we've covered so far, guys, is grammar and uh, grammatical range and accuracy. So let me now move to the next portion. So here. Okay. So, uh, lexical resource. So, we already clarified that this is all about vocabulary, okay? So, the first item written is that you make sure that you attend vocab classes and exams. Of course, I'm talking to uh, Niner students here, but if in case you, know, you intend to initially prepare yourself, just self-study, then I recommend that you attend or at least do some research on like vocab the common words that are used in the IELTS exam. Now, so there are actually a lot of materials available online. I'm pretty sure that you'd be able to arrive or retrieve some information online then. So try to look for words that are commonly used in the speaking tests and as well as writing tests. Diba? So there. No? So in, in that way, you get to enhance, you get to widen your vocabulary then. Uh, but here at Niner, just like grammar, we offer vocab classes. Um, in total, we have around three vocab lectures and three exams. So, so in total, that those are six vocab-related classes then that we offer. And um, the thing is, you like to do vocab exercises. No? Kasi mi, minsan, when we encounter a new word, hindi naman natin kaagad-agad magagamit yan sa next uh, na speaking test natin eh. Diba? So, of course, if the situation calls for it, especially for idiomatic expressions, diba? So, hindi naman kailangan ipipilit natin yung idiomatic expression if the situation doesn't call for it. So, the most important thing always is to make sure that we use it in the proper context, right? And the thing is, with vocab exercises, you become more familiar as to in what situations are these words appropriate. Diba? Kasi in as much as synonym sila, sabihin mo, the, the words uh, would share the same meaning. But you cannot just simply replace one word with the other without considering the context. Diba? Baka kasi itong word na to is more appropriate for another context or another situation which might not necessarily be the same case with another word even though that they are synonymous to one another. No? So may mga ganong situation. 
So um, another thing, I just want to read what's written on the third item or third bullet point. Um, you watch videos on IELTS speaking tests, right? So this is something that um, is this is something that you can easily do um, if you're fond of like watching YouTube videos. So now might be the best time to do some research on it. No? So yung kaninang video na nakita natin, I actually got it from YouTube. Um, I you just simply search for IELTS Preparation Australian Network. Diba? So there, no? so IELTS speaking tests, so there are a lot. So at least you get to be more familiar with the kind and level of vocabulary range examinees are using then. Okay, now, um, with regard to vocabulary, guys, you, you have to be self-aware. Yeah, this is something that I always remind my students when we have coaching sessions then, that you have to be watchful of repetitive use of statements or certain words. So I'll give you an example. May mga iba sa atin ang favorite the word actually, diba? so we keep using the word actually. That's what I noticed with some people. Like when, when I ask them a question, yung, the, the very first word that comes out of their, uh, their, their mouth is always the word actually. Or some um, make use of the word basically instead. Diba? Or, you know, th th there are certain crutch. You know, some, some people would call it crutch words. So yung words na comf comfortable tayo laging ginagamit. And the thing is, it might be taken against you as a repetition, as redundancy, because again, this is this is an IELTS exam, so we have to make sure that we avoid repetition and the words that uh, that we use should be variety, diba? So kailangan conscious tayo of using variety in word choice, right? And how do we how do we become more self-aware? For one. I recommend that you can record yourself while doing self-practice. I mean, if you don't have someone with you that you can practice with, which hopefully you have someone, no, but you might have a colleague uh, at, at work that uh, who is also planning to take the IELTS exam. Baka pwede naman na maging partner kayo for speaking test, di ba? So you can partner up with the person. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, sorry guys. Right. Uh, uh, hello guys, can you turn off your microphone, please? Yes, I think I, I can hear you. Okay, so anyway, going back. So uh, you can record yourself while doing self practice. Um, or better yet, if you have a colleague in your workplace or if you have like a, you know, your, your loved one that you can, you know, that, that you can actually um, arrange, do, net, net, do special arrangement. Pwede mo ba ako practice for a one-on-one -on -one session, diba? So it, it might help, diba? So uh, the thing is, the thing with having a partner is that they can easily give you feedback, Diba? So on, uh, papapansin nila, ano ba yung mga rooms for improvement? May mga nauulit ka bang words? So at least you can be given feedback right away. Now, another thing, I'd like to move on to the next item. Avoid parroting the question. So what do I mean by avoid parroting the question? Kasi, like, halimbawa, tanungin lang kita, simple, what, what is your favorite food? Diba? Kung alam mo, yung tanong ko, what is your favorite food? So, automatic, most people who'd answer that question, they'll just simply copy the exact words as based upon my question. So, it's so easy to say, my favorite food is pizza. Diba? So, what's your favorite food? My favorite food is pizza. So, it's so easy to just simply parrot. Yung parang kukopyahin mo na lang, literally, yung mga words dun sa question, doon sa sagot mo. And the thing is, if I were to give you a good score, and when I say good score, a good score that would set you apart from the rest of the, 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 the examinees who I've asked that question, the same question. So how am I going to give you a good score if you use the same way or if you just simply parroted what everyone else did? Diba? So for you to stand out, uh, for you to get a good score for vocabulary, you'd like to make use of your own words or try to put extra effort in trying to rephrase, trying to come up with an interesting, a more, uh, a more effortful and more interesting answer to that question. Possibly you can say that, 
well, I love to eat. I love to eat pizza, right? Or you can say pizza is my comfort food. Or whenever I crave for something, especially when I'm stressed, I always look forward to eating or having pizza delivered at home. Diba? So something like that. No? So uh, again, I just wanted you to explore. You try to try to personalize your answer to the question instead of literally just simply copying the exact words then. Because if you just do that, then everyone else will also be doing the same thing. And how am I going, if I were an examiner, how am I going to give you a good score if it's going to be the exact same um, answer to the question as like most of the uh, interviewees that I've actually asked the question? Diba? So, yun. so again, you just avoid parroting the question. Now, another item. So let me uh, share to you the last item here on my screen. So it says, please don't use highfalutin words. No? So uh, just to explain what you mean by highfalutin, ito yung mga malalalim, mga mabubulaklak na words. These are big words, di ba? Especially if you're not sure how to use them or uncomfortable using them. Um, I myself wouldn't even attempt to make use of big words just for the purpose of impressing the, the audience or impressing my examiner then. So the way you impress your examiner is making sure that whatever words you will be using, if it's highfalutin or if it's a simple word, as long as the words are used in the proper context and the situation calls for it then. So that's the way you deliver effectively. Because after all, what they're really after is how uh, effective you use the language, you use your words, you use grammar to convey clear message. Diba? So this is not, of course, um, just simply using highfalutin words. But guys, don't get me wrong, huh? There are some of us, really depends upon your range of vocabulary, there are some of us who are pretty much comfortable using highfalutin words. No? So I like to think of like Miriam Defensor Santiago, no? so the late senator. So it, it, it is possible for you to use highfalutin words if it's your nature to use it. And if the examiner sees that you know, the words that you use were in the proper context, then there shouldn't be any problem with it. But the problem is if someone forces to make use of a highfalutin word just for the sake of using highfalutin word, and I wouldn't really advise you doing that. Okay, so that's it. Now, let's proceed with a few more items relating to lexical resource. Uh, later, I'm going to look into our chat box later um, and try to address any question you might have. Okay, so guys, another item here, I'll just highlight this. Um, you make use of technology, right? Um, wh what I personally use is Google. Um, I try to Google to search for the meaning of the word. And actually, not only the meaning, uh, I, I mean, with Google, you can actually also uh, check on how a word is pronounced. Diba? So, kung hindi ka sure sa pagpronounce a word, uh, just ask Google how to pronounce it. And you just simply click on the speaker icon and uh, it tells you how you're supposed to pronounce it. No? So, iba, may, may, minsan may mga American or may British accent pa yun. So, you know, it comes very handy. No? Of course, on the exam, wala kang ganun, no. But as part of your preparation is to use Google to search for the meaning of the word and as well as yung pronunciation. And guys, don't uh, go, uh, go beyond the meaning of the words because sometimes, okay, naintindihan ko yung meaning, yung definition of the word, pero ang tanong, kaya ba natin siyang gamitin sa sentence? No, Kasi, you know, sabihin natin, you know the word, but the question is, practically speaking, can you use it in a sentence? And that's the thing about Google, which sets it apart from dictionary, yung traditional dictionary na meron tayo. Traditional dictionary, hardbound dictionary, would just simply give you the definition of the word. 
And I don't think that, especially, siguro, except for some special dictionaries, but most dictionaries I, I, I've seen wouldn't have sentences, wouldn't give you sentences on how to use it. But the thing is, with Google, you can just simply search the word and it also tells you how to use them in sentences. And hopefully, by reading those sentences, you'd be able to have like a general feel of how to use them in your own situation if the situation calls for it then. Diba? So yun, para kasi mas magiging comfortable ka eh. So when you try to attempt to use it on the speaking test, at least you'd have a greater chance of ensuring that you use the word in the proper context. Okay? So there. Now, um, the next, I'll just have to move on to the next portion here. So this is about idioms. I think I already specified about idioms kanina. So you may make use of idiomatic expressions, but it's always supposed to be within proper context. And guys, hinay-hinay rin tayo sa paggamit ng idioms. No? Kasi uh, mamaya, may, may sinabi ka, um, I'm a happy bunny. Diba? So happy bunny, gumamit ka. Tapos maya-maya, gumamit ka. Drowned rat. Tapos mamaya, elephant in the room. So baka magulat yung examiner mo na sa dami ng hayop na mention mo sa conversation mo. So instead of having like a conversation, it ended up sounding like a zoo. No? So, sa dami ng mga animals, sa dami ng hayop na napangalanan mo doon sa paggamit ng idiom. So you just have to make sure that you control usage of idiomatic expressions. So this is not to discourage you to use idioms. Yes, you may make use of idioms because using idioms would have the examiner have an impression that, okay, this person has a deeper understanding of the English language. No? Kasi yun yung, yun yung sense ng idioms. Eh. I mean, it's not taken literally. But these are like figures of speech. These are like idioms. Diba? And normally, idioms would have like a deeper, deeper meaning to it. Diba? And uh, you know, if you make use of it, this can have an impact on, the, on your score for the speaking test. But again, you always make sure that the situation calls for it. Right? You don't just simply use idioms just for the purpose of using it. It has to be in the proper context. Okay, And by the way, we also have a class in Niner that we discuss about these idiomatic expressions. So we call it vocabulary too. All right. So now next, I'll move on to the last item here on my screen. Another thing, guys, you familiarize yourselves with descriptive words. Ano yung mga descriptive words sa uh, English? No? So sa Filipino, ito yung mga pandiwa at yung mga, ah, sorry, not pandiwa, pang-uri at saka pang-abay. So these are adjectives and um, as well as adverbs. No? So we make use of these in order for the statements to be more interesting to listen to. Right, mas nagiging colorful siya, mas nagiging vivid yung description if you make use of your adjectives, adverbs to describe people, to describe everyday objects, to describe events. Then, so it provides clearer message to your examiner if you make use of your idioms. But of course, everything about communication really, guys, is about balance, de ba? Kasi baka naman uh, sa sobrang excited natin na gumamit. Kasi sabi dito sa live lecture that I will have to make use of adjectives. So baka naman sumobra. No? Baka masyadong madaming bulaklak na. It's too much flavor. And remember guys that effective communication is all about balance. So everything that is too much, anything rather, anything that is too much can you know can leave a bad taste on, the, on your examiner's position. So you try to have a balance and that's why you have practice no you need to practice so at least you get to have a rough sense of how much description is necessary for one sentence how much is enough okay so there so again adjectives and adverbs then okay so um i think that's about it for the first two criterion criteria rather so far guys what we've covered i just want to do a short recap um we started off introducing to you uh, the different parts of the tests, right? And uh, we also pointed out 
the descriptor. So I've introduced those four different criteria and explained to you the scoring system. And after which we introduce the first criterion, which is grammatical range and accuracy. We provided some tips and strategies there, right? Tapos uh, the next one, so we have lexical resource, which is all about the vocabulary then. So we still have two more criteria left to discuss, right? But you know, now might be the best time for me to answer any question you might have so far for those two criteria. So I'll just go to our Zoom. Um, okay, I just have to go to Zoom then and look into some questions you might have. Um, okay, so far, wala naman. So according to Gretzel, no, baka animal. Yeah, so madaming animal. No? So pag na-excite -na sa mga paggamit ng idioms. Um, okay, so, yeah, so let's see if you have any question. Yeah, so far, no questions. Yeah. So I would believe that it's a good thing that you don't have any questions. That uh, I would assume that everything is clear so far. So hopefully, you know, you guys are able to follow. At any rate, I'm going to uh, give you a copy of the handout I'm flashing on my screen later. Right, questions, guys, before I move on to the next. So the next portion, I will have to switch to another video a lot. So I will have to play another video uh, talking about vocabulary range. Okay. Okay, so, so, yeah, so I, I'll just go back to our chat messages after this video then. I'll just have to stop sharing all that, guys, and we'll move on to the next video. So this one is all about vocabulary range in speaking. All right, uh, just give me one moment, guys. Hello and welcome to Study English IELTS Preparation. I'm Margot Politis. Today we'll look at how to make best use of your vocabulary and get your meaning across in the IELTS speaking test. Knowing how to use your vocabulary in different ways can help you maintain conversation. When you find that you can't think of the right word, you can talk around the idea as this candidate does here. Do you think the children of famous people have it easy? No, I don't think so. It must be very, very hard. You know, when I lived in Ecuador, I knew a lot of famous people and they always have to have bodyguards or they have to live behind bars, you know, behind big walls. And children are always protected. And they don't have the freedom. So it's a big price you pay. You can picture the surroundings from her description, even though she has not named it. She said, have to have bodyguards, live behind bars, behind big walls. Children are always protected and they don't have the freedom. She paints a clear picture of what she means, live behind bars, we imagine someone in jail. Bodyguards, employing someone to protect you and your children. The vocabulary used in her description accurately, effectively and successfully describes a gated community. The ability to use your vocabulary to describe something you don't have the exact word for is called circumlocution. Circumlocution means talking around something and is assessed as a vocabulary skill. 
During the interview, the examiner may use a word that you don't know the meaning of. Let's imagine the topic of computers in education comes up in the interview. The interviewer takes the opportunity to explore this area and says... Computer technology plays a big role in children's education today. Do you think the benefits of using computers are overrated? Let's say you don't understand the word overrated. You can ask the interviewer what that word means, like this. Computer technology plays a big role in children's education today. Do you think the benefits of using computers are overrated? What do you mean by overrated? I mean that the benefits are regarded too highly. They're exaggerated. This is called asking for clarification. Apart from helping you answer, it shows the interviewer an aspect of your speaking ability. There are several ways of asking for clarification. You could say... Sorry, I'm not quite sure what you mean by overrated. Or... Would you mind explaining what overrated means? All these examples ask for clarification appropriately. They range from the least formal, what do you mean by, to the most formal, would you mind explaining? It would be inappropriate in such a formal interview to just say, What's overrated? It would, however, be more to your advantage if you tried to guess the meaning of overrated and then checked with the interviewer whether your understanding is correct. Let's try doing this. You know from your own experience that the use of computers for education can be good and bad. The question asks about benefits. Benefits are good things, but are they overrated? Is there any part of the word you recognise? It starts with over, a prefix you might know. You hear of overpopulation and people being overweight. That's too many people and too fat. So over probably means too much and it's not a good thing. So you can check with the interviewer to see if you've understood by rephrasing the question like this. Computer technology plays a big role in children's education today. Do you think the benefits of using computers are overrated? Are you saying that the benefits of computer use might not be that good? Yes, that's right. Asking a question like this shows that you can use your vocabulary skillfully. The questions in the speaking test interview are designed to encourage answers that show you can use a range of language functions. The interviewer wants to see if you can express an opinion or speculate or give a suggestion. It's a good idea to vary the ways you respond. Take the question, do you think there is too much violence in films today? It's inviting you to express an opinion, like this. As far as I'm concerned, there is too much violence in films these days. But there are other ways of expressing an opinion. Listen. In my opinion, there is too much violence in films these days. From my point of view, there is too much violence in films these days. It seems to me that there is too much violence in films these days. Well, I would say there is too much violence in films these days. The same applies to speculating. Speculating means making suggestions where you don't necessarily know the right answer. Here are some phrases you can use to speculate. Why do teenagers vandalise public transport? If I had to guess, I'd say that it's boredom. I'm not sure, but from my observation, it's boredom. I imagine that the most important reason would be boredom. And here are some ways to give suggestions. What would you do to improve public transport? I think what should be done is increase services. The problem could be solved by increasing services. What might be done is increasing services. Another strategy is to use synonyms or words that have similar meanings. Listen to a candidate doing this. 
Why have the forms of popular entertainment changed over the years? Because society has changed a lot, and now we seem to be rushing all the time and want to consume everything a lot faster. So I think every form of entertainment is also reflecting that kind of very fast, quick way of wanting something different and wanting something very quickly. He uses a number of synonyms to talk about how society has changed. He feels there is a need for things to be done in a hurry. He uses the synonyms rushing, fast and quick. He uses different word forms, the adjective fast and its comparative faster, the adjective quick and the adverb quickly. By using a variety of synonyms and different word forms, he is managing communication well and maintaining fluency. Listen again. Because society has changed a lot and now we seem to be rushing all the time and want to consume everything a lot faster. So I think every form of entertainment is also reflecting that kind of very fast, quick way of wanting something different and wanting something very quickly. One way to build up your vocabulary is to organise words around categories, such as movement. You can arrange words like this. Some synonyms are fast and quick. A collocation or group of words often used together is rushing all the time. Word forms would be faster and quickly. Some opposites would be slow and sluggish. An idiom could be in the fast lane, which means living an exciting, if sometimes risky, life. Keep adding to this and then using the words you've discovered. That's all for now. To find more information about the vocabulary you need for the speaking test, visit our Study English website. Good luck with your studies. Bye for now. Okay. Right, so guys, I just want to uh, point out one thing with regard to the video that we just watched. So if you if you try to recall, the, there was one instance there where the examinee asked to ask the examiner the a question, and I, I think some of you might have this um, idea in mind that is it okay for me to ask a question to the examiner, right? Uh, possibly for the reason that you, you might need to, to ask him to repeat the question. So it's actually okay, right? So okay lang naman that you ask them to repeat the question. Or better yet, um, I, I think what we saw kanina is that the examinee attempted to try to paraphrase um, the, the question to confirm with the examiner whether, whether the person understood the question right or not. Diba? So in that way, kasi, when you paraphrase it, at least there's extra effort to try to, you know, to try to uh, share to the examiner what you think about the topic. So must my effort must you you add you put more value to it uh, instead of like just simply asking the examiner to repeat the question, which is also okay, right? What is not okay, guys, is that if the exam if you keep asking the examiner to repeat. Uh, the question for you. Because if that's the case, then there might be some issues already with your listening skills or an issue with comprehension. Diba? So you, you can ask them to repeat once or twice, but more than two times, I don't think it's a good idea. Because it, it can compromise your score for the speaking test if you keep asking to repeat the question. Okay, now, um, guys, if you look into our chat messages, I'm not really sure if it's going to be the same here, right? But at any rate, I'll just share this as well as uh, those people who are attending on my Zoom on the on the Zoom class because I I think I sent it kanina sa ano sa Facebook Live, but let me just share it with as well for uh, sa mga nasa Zoom class. So I already shared the material, uh, the, the one that I'm flashing on my screen earlier. So I am sharing it with you right now. 
um, let me just resend it to those attending sa Facebook Live. Yeah, I'll just have to resend it uh, in case you weren't able to capture the first one. Okay, so, um, okay, yeah, there's a question coming from Jeanette Ocapo. So, is there a specific time, like month, kung kailan po ilalabas ang, ang specific topic? Now, Jeanette, to my knowledge, um, th there's no specific time. So, I, I might be wrong, but from what I know, there's no specific time as to what sort of topic will come out on the exam. Now, the thing is, you, you might want to consider current events, right? So, Guru, related, I'm not sure if this is something related to your question, but oftentimes, especially for the writing part, and sometimes even for the speaking tests, there might be some questions which might relate to what's happening around us, right? So, you know, you, you might possibly be asked questions, for example, about the, the health scare happening around the world, which is the pandemic. Or uh, since it's Christmas, then anticipate questions. If you're taking it this December, then you, you prepare yourself to ask questions, to answer questions relating to the holidays. Diba? So you have to pay attention to what's happening around us then. Diba? Kasi that might give you some hint as to what type of questions they might ask you, but not necessarily, right? There, there might be sometimes that it's not related at all to what's happening around us, so that's also possible. So, yeah, so uh, to my knowledge, I don't think that it, it that there's a specific month to it, but possibly might be related to, sometimes questions might be related to current events happening around us. So there, okay? So, um. Okay, so guys, I'll just have to move forward then and let me discuss the two more topics left we have. So the next one is pronunciation, right? So just like what they said at the beginning of our class, you don't need to pretend a foreign accent. Like um, if you observe how I communicate, how I pronounce my words, I don't have a twang. I don't sound British. I don't sound American accent. But pretty much with the way I communicate with you, more or less, I hope that you're able to understand me, right? Because this is a neutral accent, right? Neutral accent in the sense that as long as you clearly pronounce the words syllable per syllable um, as long as you avoid certain lapses that most Filipinos would have problems with like the F and P, the V and B sounds. Kagaya nitong sa second bullet point. No? So I'll just connect it with what's written on the second bullet point. So you try to neutralize any Filipino wisms like the F and T often interchange, the V and B, uh, the T and TH then, um, the distinct vowel sounds. No? So alimbawa, uh, a common example dito yung der. Diba? San, nasan ba? Over der. Okay, do I say der? Right? So is it der? Diba? Yung teddy bear, alimbawa. No? So my favorite toy back when I was still a kid was, te I was a teddy bear. It's a teddy bear, right? So teddy bear, right? So yeah, no. So th those are just minor corrections on on pronunciation. And the thing is, if we tend to mispronounce words, because we might be misunderstood by the examiner, di ba? So alimbawa, yung ano, alimbawa, gusto mo sabihin, we have uh, in the Philippines, we have a lot of beaches. Diba? E paano kung na mispronounce mo yung word na beaches? You, 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 must, you might have mispronounced it. Ayoko na lang sabihin dito kasi naka-live to. But if in case, for example, you mispronounce the word beaches and the examiner will be thinking that, oh, okay, is the person cursing me or what? Okay, so there. So it would be leading to misunderstanding. So we have to make sure that those minor corrections on uh, pronunciation should be corrected. And how does one develop good pronunciation skills? And just like what they said, it's not something that we can do overnight. So it's like a muscle. Yeah, you think of it as like a muscle memory. Diba yung mga athletes, they, they, they practice every morning, uh, while everyone is still asleep, they wake up very early, then they have the discipline uh, to commit to daily practice then because we, they know for a fact that if they do it every day or if they could continuously do it, 
um, they, they no longer have to think about it, but it already becomes part of their system. It becomes a habit. It becomes automatic. And that's exactly what we want to achieve pagdating sa pronunciation. It should already be automatic. And how do we practice? For one, I recommend that you can read out loud. Diba? Kasi nakakatulong yun. I mean, it, you read out loud articles that you see on Facebook, for instance. And um, wh what you could do is to, you know, to, to make sure that you use proper tone, make it, uh, make it pleasant to, to listen to. So, hindi, kailangan hindi parang tunog na parang nagbabasa ka. You, you need to put more emotions to it. You need to put proper emotion, proper enthusiasm in, 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 in reading the, the statements, diba? Kasi that, that's actually one thing I notice with some examinees or some students that I talk to. Yung tone ng problema, monotonous yung tone. Or minsan, yung rising intonation. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with that. Filipinos tend to have rising intonation. Parang laging patanong siya. Like for example, I've been working as a nurse in Saudi for the past five years. Diba? Yung parang, parang uh, at the examiner's mind, if I, if I were the examiner, uh, I would be thinking to myself, Teka, is this person asking me if she's working for, if she's been working for five years? Kasi, I mean, in English language, if there's a rising intonation, uh, that gives me a sense that you're asking me a question. Diba kasi rising intonation suggests asking a question. And the thing is, you don't want to create a rising intonation. For one, it sounds like you, you are not confident with your statement. And that's why you have to pay attention to the intonation as well. So falling intonation in the English language would sound more certain, would sound more confident. Diba? So instead of saying, I've been working here for the, for the past five years, I've been working here for the past five years. Yeah, so you pa, pa, pag falling intonation, you'd sound more confident. Okay? So there. And of course, volume. No? Kasi when you read out loud, mas nagiging conscious ka sa volume ng bosses. And I think I already mentioned this kanina, yung tongue twisters. No? I mean, you can easily search exercises online guys no uh you you have tongue twisters like she sells seashells by the seashore if you're having problem with the s and sh sound or um you can practice on the p sound like peter piper pick a peck of pickled peppers so try to look for tongue twister exercises online that you think would be challenging for you Diba? It could be like a combination of F and P or yung mga may V and B sounds or yung mga vowels then Kasi uh, with tongue twisters, it, um, it forces you to distinguish the sounds we have in the English language. Kasi masyadong magkakalapit yung mga S and SH sounds within a short sentence when you have tongue twister. Diba? And the thing is, it forces your tongue to position itself quickly to pronounce a certain sound as accurate as you could and be able to distinguish that from the other sound that you often confuse with. The balimawa, yung T, chaka TH, yung V, chaka B, yung F and P, and so on and so forth. No? And another piece of advice. Now, this is not something that's written here. But what I notice, guys, siguro sa kaba natin minsan, like when during the speaking test, sometimes we have the tendency na nagiging dry yung oral cavity natin. Like that's what I notice with me as well. Um, um, it, it tends to dry up. And the thing is, it's kind of difficult to pronounce certain sounds in English if you have dry mouth, especially yung tongue, kung, kung dry yung dila mo. It's so difficult to pronounce the T and TH. Right? That's something that uh, I, I can relate to. No? So instead of saying na thank you, ang napopronounce ko thank you. Kasi wala na eh. Parang kumbaga parang dry na yung tongue ko, dry na yung mouth ko. So it's kind of difficult to uh, protrude the tongue to produce the H sound when I say thank you. Kasi when you say thank you, you, you need to protrude the tongue out a bit to produce that TH sound. So since mahirap mag protrude ng tongue because dry, so ang sinasabi na lang, thank you. Thank you. Diba? So thank you, thank you. Diba? So thank you. 
major effort yun. And that's why I recommend during the test or before the test, try to sip some water. No, so do, don't drink too much water to the point that baka maihi kayo sa exam, right? But try to sip some water enough uh, for you to have uh, well. Uh, hydrated oral cavity, then it would be easier for your tongue to pronounce different sounds. Then, uh, so that's just a piece of advice, no, for pronunciation. Okay, so let's move forward. Uh, I still have a few more items left for pronunciation, so let me just discuss part by part a little. So training your articulators will help you because pronunciation is developed through habit. So I think already mentioned that. No? And in case you're wondering what you mean by articulators, ito yung tongue, yung vocal cords natin, yung mouth natin, even the teeth would also have, um, uh, would also have a vital role to play in producing sounds. So it's supposed to be habit. Now, don't be monotonous. I think already established that kanina. So you try to, don't be scared to put emotions in the conversation. Kasi remember guys, effective communication, effective delivery. You're conveying emotion. If the examiner is asking you for, uh, like to talk about the most recent vacation that you have, of course, you have to, you have to make the examiner feel the excitement of having traveled to a foreign country for the first time. Diba? So, hindi pwede na parang patay na bata ka na nagkakwento about your vacation. Diba? So, there. So, again, that's effective communication. You have to make sure that the examiner feels the emotion that you're trying to convey. Okay? Now, speaking audibly, uh, ibig sabihin lang naman dun is to make sure that you speak clearly. And to avoid mis to, to avoid pronouncing or mispronouncing words, I would recommend na don't talk too fast. Diba? Kasi pag mabilis tayo, of course, understandably, magkakahalo-halo minsan nag-uunahan nag, nag yung mga words. So, and I can attest to that. I also share the same sentiment. No? If, I, um, if I'm on an adrenaline rush and I'm so excited about it, so I, when I talk too fast, I also end up like confusing the, the person I'm talking to kasi nagkakahalo-halo yung mga words, di ba? So try not to talk too fast and not too slow either, di ba? Kasi if it's too slow, then the examiner might get bored and you don't want to bore the examiner, especially pag ang schedule mo is after lunch, right? So it's not a good idea to talk too slow then. So there, so that's for pronunciation. Okay, so I think um, I have a message on the chat box. Ah, okay, so no questions. I, I'm going to look into the live chat now on Facebook and try to answer any question you might have. So, so far, no questions. Okay. Okay, so I would assume that it's a good sign that you don't have any questions, right? But at any rate, um, I'll just have to move forward, guys. So, so far, guys, we've covered three criteria already. No? So, grammar and fluency. Uh, sorry, grammar, grammatical range and accuracy. Uh, we pointed out lexical resource, which is basically vocab. Then for pronunciation, which is the third criterion. So, what else is in store for us? So, we're down to the last criteria and then so we've this last portion uh, i'll just have to adjust my screen first okay okay so here so what's the next one here as written fluency and coherence yeah that's the last criteria no? so what is fluency and coherence so um i i always try to uh compare it with uh driving Diba? Yung, yung speaking, pagdating sa fluency kasi, parang it's the steady flow of your ideas. And I like to compare it with driving, right? So when you drive, it needs to be a smooth experience for the passengers. And um, smooth experience, meaning to say that malinis or polido yung, yung, yung road natin, walang mga bako-bako, uh, walang mga lubak. Diba? Kasi Every time there are there there are those dents or there are those uh, pitfalls then or or if you keep breaking, di ba yung pag nagbe ka parang gumaganon, di ba nag gumaganon yung mga passenger natin and it, it would add up to unpleasant 
uh, experience to your to your passenger and the same thing also goes with the uh, with with fluency and the speaking test diba so if you keep pausing unnecessary parang pause pa hinto hinto pag masyadong madaming fillers um 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 tapos pag patalon-talon ka ng ideas mo you jump from one idea to another so those things should be avoided kasi if you don't avoid it then expect that you're going to get minus points for this criterion. So that's fluency and coherence then. So always consider your examiner's perspective. Diba? What your goal is, guys, for the speaking test is to make sure that you make it easy for the examiner to understand your train of thought. Right? You try to make it simple for him to understand you. Right? And if that, if that requires you to speak slow or if that requires you to dissect your details into parts, then do so, right? Because that's your ultimate objective, eh? how you're going to communicate yourself as clearly as possible and would have a reflection that you know, you're good in using the English language. Diba? So yun, that's fluency and coherence for us. So um, I, I just want to share a few points here. So starting with uh, the first item on, the, on fluency and coherence. So what's written? Una, you need to sound certain with your statements. Diba kanina yung na-mention ko yung intonation. Diba yung rising intonation then. So you need to sound certain with your statements. Falling intonation would make it sound more confident. Okay? And uh, also related to that, of course, minimize rising intonation then because that would suggest lack of confidence. And I always tell my students that you have to demonstrate to the examiner that you're comfortable using the language. Diba? Kung nakikita ng examiner na anxious ka, eh, paano yan? Diba? It would reflect the lack of confidence that you have or it would reflect the lack of comfortable level of using the language. And you don't want that to happen because it can definitely affect your score on the speaking test. Diba? Um, fillers like ums are natural and okay. So generally speaking, we use fillers. I myself, I have to admit that I also make use of fillers but guys you just have to be conscious no kasi if it's excessive it can also affect your fluency if it's too much if there are too much uh, fillers happening in the conversation it can affect the flow of your ideas then right and um, one, there are many ways for some people or other lecturers. What I noticed that they recommend to the students that you can replace fillers with pauses. Um, that, that's something that you can do. But for me, I'm really having a hard time. No? Honestly speaking, it's kind of difficult for me to consciously replace my fillers with pauses. Uh, so what I do, if you notice, I try to speak a bit faster. Even though that I have fillers on my con on my discussion, if I speak relatively faster than usual, at least the fillers are not that noticeable. The fillers are more noticeable, guys. Pag mabagal ka magsalita, kasi it can be dragging. It you 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 stretch your fillers when you talk very slow, and when you talk fast. Um, hindi siya masyado napapansin. No? So that's something that uh, I personally do. So there, so fillers. Um, I'm not expecting you to totally eliminate it, but at least try your best to minimize those fillers then. Okay, so another thing, um, this is something I'm also very conscious of. You try to minimize awkward pauses, guys, and dead airs, di ba? Kasi... Um, it, it can add up to your anxiety if you have lots of dead air. And the thing is, it can worsen your anxiety if you have awkward pauses or dead air. So as much as possible, you try to keep talking. You try to keep you know, the discussion live and continuous then. Sometimes, once in a while, you can pause. But I wouldn't recommend like awkwardly pausing 
uh, for a long time, like 10 seconds or 5 seconds. And kasi uh, the, 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 the problem in there is that ma, 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 over, ma overwhelm ka ng anxiety. Eh. You, know, you, 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 might be, you might become conscious of the examiner's facial expression already and you can no longer think. So nagiging mental block na ang nangyayari. Diba? So there, of course, that comes with practice. And the next one, if you need to pause for a few seconds to gather your thoughts, then do so. And I'll, I'll just continue on with a few more items here. Um, as written, I'll just highlight uh, uh, which part am I in now. So always be organized in your discussion, right? That's a common dilemma as well for many of my students. No? How does one organize your discussion then? So just like what he said, you, you can pause, you can take a few seconds before you even open your mouth. Uh, to answer a question, you might want to process your thoughts, right? Or you can, if you don't want to spare a few moments not talking, then possibly you can think out loud, right? You can think out loud. You can walk your examiner through your thought process then, yeah, just to let him know that you're actually trying to process your thoughts then. And I also recommend, like when you have a book, for instance, guys, th there's always that table of contents. So especially for part two questions, no, I recommend that you try to provide an overview of what topics you are covering, you will be covering rather, and try to limit it to just three items. Because no? sometimes it can be overwhelming. You might have so many ideas regarding the topic. And the thing is, you're only given 15 minutes. Or for that matter, for part two, you're only given two minutes to even talk about the topic. So try your best to prioritize what you think are the three most important points that you like to convey. Diba? So always consider the time constraint. No? Kasi you can't just simply talk about everything you know about the topic unless, of course, you have enough time. But for that matter, it's always time constrained. So you need to prioritize which ones are the most relevant to talk about. Diba? So yun. And uh, what else? Use conjunctions to connect your statements and ideas. This is something to do with uh, coherence and cohesion. Um, this is something I'm very conscious about. Like when you enumerate, you make use of first, second, third, fourth, lastly. Um, wh when you're trying to compare, you can go for in contrast, meanwhile, on the other hand, however, on the opposite side of the coin. So I'm just giving you some conjunctions to use then. No? So again, depends on the relationship of the ideas that you're trying to convey. Sometimes you try to contrast. Sometimes it's cause and effect, like when you use the word because or therefore or does. No? Because when you use these conjunctions, it helps, the, it helps you weave together your ideas. And as a result, your examiner would find it easy to follow your train of thought if you have used proper conjunctions. Okay? Now, another thing, uh, don't beat around the bush. Hindi pwede yung parang paikot, iniikot-ikot mo lang yung discussion. No? And the thing is, pag ganun yung nangyari, you will get minus points for fluency and coherence. So the idea for the speaking test is that you need to convey it in a concise manner. You need to make sure that you're straight to the point in answering the questions then. And as much as possible, you don't want to repeat statements or ideas that you've already mentioned. Because if you keep repeating it, then that's what you call beating around the bush. Now, uh, just like what I said, be concise in your statements and uh, just continue reading uh, the remaining items here. So note which questions need answers that should be elaborated or that questions that need elaboration. Of course, hindi naman lahat ng mga questions sa uh, IELTS speaking tests need to be uh, elaborated on, meaning to say that will require you to explain and come up with more than three sentences. But I mean, if the examiner is simply asking how young are you, then you just simply answer the question. Of course, they wouldn't even ask you about the age, but just in case. So, but normally, the kind of questions that will ask you to to elaborate are usually the why questions and how questions. Pag ang tanong ay why, 
then you'll have to explain. No, mag-explain ka na mga reasons mo why you think you might be giving your opinion. Tapos pag how naman, usually they ask you about like steps. What are the steps that you'll have to discuss? And in that way, you can tell that you need to elaborate. But if it's a simple question of like who or what, then it doesn't need much elaboration. One or two or even three sentences at the most could be answered by those kind of questions then. Okay, you can actually tell as well, guys. No, I, I mean, in the interview, you can tell through the body language to the facial expression of your examiner. So if the examiner is about to, you know, eh, parang may gesture na is about to ask question already, then that, that means that you'll have to stop talking, di ba? So makikita mo naman eh, masasense mo naman yun if the person is about to say something, di ba? So you, that, that means, of course, you'll have to stop talking then. And uh, next one, I'll just have to proceed with this next item. So answering questions in IELTS will require your memory and creativity, diba? So guys, sa exam, I, I always reiterate to my students that the, 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 the speaking test is not a test of uh, knowledge, right? It's not a test of knowledge. We need to say that you're not being evaluated as to whether you know space travel or you know cryptocurrency, for instance, or not. So it's not a test of knowledge. No, hindi naman siya knowledge ng gaano ka kaalam sa regard regarding sa isang topic. So it's not like a licensure exam for nurses, lembawa. So it's not like that. Um, what they're evaluating you on is your ability to use the language to convey yourself, to express yourself, right? So in answering questions, you will have to depend on two things. One, your memory. Uh, what do you know about the topic? Do you have a first-hand experience regarding the topic? Uh, can you share something that you saw on the news, for instance, or... Uh, does your friend have something that he shared previously with you relating to the topic? You, you, you actually get from, from memory, diba? And the thing is, when you constantly practice, like in, at Niner, the, the students constantly practice with us. When they have coaching sessions with us then, yung mas, nag, mas nagiging, ano, mas, nag, mas lumilitaw, yung, mas nas, nag, nagsasurface yung mga experiences nila, yung mga, yung, yung, yung memory collection nila, memory recollection nila. So it, it's faster for them to think of what they, how, how to answer the question. No? Kasi they, they keep practicing. And the problem is, if you don't practice and tomorrow na yung exam mo, halimbawa, di ba? So parang mag warm up ka. No? So parang bukas, you're going to warm up and try to, it might take some time or a few moments for you try to process from memory what you still remember regarding that topic. Diba? So yun yung kagandahan ng practice kasi. So it trains your memory, it trains your creativity to answer questions. Diba? Kasi the, the, the memory, you like to think of the, your, your memory as the pieces of the puzzle. And for you to create a picture, you need to use your creativity. Diba? Kasi creativity is your ability to create something. So we, you create a big picture. You create a story out of the memory or the ideas that you have about the topic then diba? for you to come up with an answer. So it doesn't necessarily be, it doesn't necessarily need to be the best answer because sometimes you might have the best answer but the delivery is not good. Diba? So at the end of the day, the one who gets really good score on the test is the one who delivers, who delivers it really well. No matter uh, what the content is, as long as the content is sensible, it doesn't need to be the best answer. But if the examiner notices that you're able to communicate yourself and deliver yourself really well, then you know I don't think that there's no reason for him to give you a you know a bad score or a low score for that matter, the ambassador. So it's again, it's about the delivery. In as much as the content is uh, always our common dilemma. Um, is my answer correct or not? Uh, as long as it's not off topic and as long as the examiner senses that you are on point and you understood what the question is asking, then you're good to go. 
Diba? So uh, another, you must train yourself to think fast. This is something that I think um, you can learn from like stand-up comedians. I just have to mention like about Vice Ganda Limbawa, no? or stand-up comedians like uh, if you go foreign like Ellen DeGeneres, uh, they're, they're, they're wit. No? So witty sila. Mabilis sila makapag-isip ng mga ibabato ng mga uh, segue or mababato na punchline. Diba? So they're quick. No? So mabilis yung isip nila. And that's something that you can train yourself. I'm not sure if you've heard of improvs. Diba? Yung improvs, um, it's a tool that you can use to randomly pick out uh, to, to, to pick out random ideas and try to come up with a story. Um, within those random ideas already. And that, of course, requires creativity. Diba? So no matter how ridiculous the story is, eh, mag-create ka ng story uh, out of these unrelated topics then. Diba? So there. But of course, I, I won't be discussing improvs anymore uh, since uh, it will be saved for another topic. And of course, just like what I keep reiterating, so to end our session for today, so I just want to emphasize on practicing. Diba? So lahat ito, uh, I, I appreciate you attending the lessons or attending our live session now, but if we don't put it into practice, then it's going to be useless, right? So this is, of course, to encourage you to find a way if you really want to pass the test, to find a way to practice. It could be doing self-review uh, or like, you know, if you'd be reviewing with your, with your colleague or it could be like enrolling at Niner then and we have promo this December. So hopefully you'd be able to uh, register for our December promo. So there. So I, th that's about it, guys, uh, for today's session. So I hope I was able to impart to you uh, important points for the speaking test and to encourage you to practice. No? So, and I think it's important, guys, that we, we try to uh, foster a friendly and supportive environment. No? So if you see someone struggling with uh, his English skills, so we don't want to Rather, we encourage him to, you know, to, to improve himself and to correct him in a nice way rather than destroying the person's uh, de destroying the person's morale you know, and the person would be discouraged and to the point that he's no longer going to fulfill his dream of going to the US or going to another country so there so that's about it actually okay so thank you for listening guys right so um yeah um admin hello Hello. No, sorry for that. Hello. Hi, sir. I, hello. Yeah. I sorry. I, I just want to answer uh some questions. I uh I, I see some questions sa ating ano, sa chat box. Yeah, so Facebook. Yeah. Facebook. Um so a question comes from K Paklibar. With regard to definitely, yes, I encountered some feedback from certain colleagues that it should be avoided to because it's redundant. Right. Actually, parang redundant nga yun, Kay. I have to agree that definitely yes is um, a, a redundant term. No? Um, siguro, ang, ano lang, ang, ang point lang, some, sometimes I also hear like good speakers that would also make use of definitely yes kasi it adds drama to it. Like when you, when you say definitely, it adds you put more emphasis that it's actually a yes when you say definitely yes. Diba? Or it's, a, it's perfectly fine to simply say yes. But if you'd like to put more emphasis to it, then you say definitely yes. Diba? So there. So I, I think it depends on the situation. I mean, if on, on your delivery, if you'd like to convey that you, you truly agree with it diba? and you truly want to say yes, and it also comes with how you deliver it, then I, I think that you can make use of definitely yes. Diba? But just simply saying yes should be fine as well. Right? But I agree. It's a bit redundant. Uh, another question comes from Jenny Rose. Um, are we graded if we utter a word, but we need to change it? So we just, we just say the word rather. Uh, just thinking if. Okay, are we graded if we utter a word, but we need to change it? So we would just say the word rather. Okay, yeah, so I don't think, um, I, 
I, I'm not really sure whether I understood the question correctly, but I, I think the idea is, um, is it okay to change the word? Is it? So we make use of the word rather, halimbawa. And I'm not really sure about how the context is. It's going to depend this a context. Um, I, I couldn't directly answer the question if it's okay or not. So it depends on the context. Um, th there might be some situations which might be okay to change it, but there might be some cases if, if for example, the examiner notices that it becomes a habit, then you might get minus points for that. Okay. Then uh, another question. Uh, IFNG says definitely no. So ganun then. It's the same explanation I have for definitely yes as well. Right. So it, it you 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 put emphasis on the statement when you go for the word definitely. That's a purpose of a modifier. Uh, this purpose of definitely. Diba? So puede then you can make I I I I I don't know with other people, but I think it's okay. Yeah, if you'd like to really emphasize on the word definitely, then I, I don't think that it's going to be a problem. Right. And, uh, okay, yeah. So, salama, Charlie. Uh, thank you, Charlie. And, okay, so there. So, I, I just want to, before we end our session, sorry, I just want to share our, the, the Facebook page of Niner then. And just like what I mentioned, we offer a promo this December then. So I hope you guys uh, enroll. And I, I just want to share it ulit sa ating, ano, uh, yeah, let me just simply copy paste it. So bigyan nyo na ako. All right. So but at any rate, I, I think I've accomplished what needs to be done for today's session. So I hope that I was able to impart to you um, you know, so, some helpful tips for speaking tests. So, yun lang. Uh, yeah, so, salamat. Hello? Hello? Yes. Hello? Ayan. Okay, but emotion. From Mr. M, last emotion with definitely no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, may emotion dapat. May drama. Kailangan sa speaking test may ano ka rin eh, may acting skills ka rin eh. Oh. Parang kung uh, parang kung alam mo, wala ka sa mood magsalita pero kailangan mong magsalita but you have to act out as if like you know, you're engaging the audience or engaging your your examiner. So you, you need to be an actor uh, when you when you go through the speaking test. That's correct, Sir Fritz. Because before, mm -hmm. when we were taking, the, uh, we were doing our practice noon, parang, kailangan natin ng emotions. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> so, hindi, hindi, hindi yes, pwedeng full patay. of energy. Yeah. Oh, oh. Hindi, hindi pwedeng patay na bata na mag-exam. Okay, <laughs> 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 patay na bata. <laughs> oh. Ayan. Mr. M? Hello? You're oh. here? Yeah. yeah. So anyway, Sir Brits, thank you for that informative lecture and we learned a lot from you. And guys, and we're looking forward for the next uh, informative lecture with Sir Brits. And welcome to IFNG Family, Sir Brits. Hi, salamat. Salamat, welcome, guys. Yeah, so it, it's my pleasure to talk with you guys. Thank you, IFNG, for, uh, you know, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I guess that's it. Let's call it a night na po. So let's take a rest and have a good night, everyone. Thank you po. God bless okay. everyone. God bless. Okay. Good night. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Okay.